to show you the diagram this is the classical biopsy taken from the cerebral cortex and this is showing the classical variable microscopic vacuoles variable sized microscopic vacuoles some of them are present in the neuropil and some of them are basically present within the cell body of the neurons or the perikaryon and this is called as the spongiotic chain the vacuolization is called as the spongiotic chain you can see some of the cell bodies are involved you can see sometimes only the vacuolar change is present in the neuropil so this is the classical pathognomonic feature of a prions disease it is classically seen in all the prion disease except the fatal familial insomnia now this is the second important image that wherein i wanted to demonstrate the pass positive amyloid or kuru plaque that is present so this is the pass staining wherein you can see the classical pinkish staining of the kuru or the amyloid plaque so this is classically seen mainly in case of cerebellar cortex welcome back everyone myself dr jibran ahmed presents to simply pathology and today we are back with another series of high yield topic today we are going to read about the prions disease which is the fourth important high yield topic now about the prions disease we have to understand that it is one of the neuro degenerative disorder and it is a rapidly progressive neuro degenerative disorder it is characterized by not only the accumulation but also by the spread of misfolded proteins and this particular condition can either occur in a sporadic manner or it can be inherited from the families in the familial form or it is also transmissible or transmitted that is it can spread from one person to another by iatrogenic means so we will discuss in details about this transmitted forms later on so if we come into the or if we discuss the basic pathogenesis of prions disease this condition is characterized by accumulation of a misfolded protein now to understand this first we have to understand that normally the prion protein is prpc which is present in alpha helix configuration and this prpc if it gets misfolded or it undergoes a conformational change it might give rise to an abnormal form of the prion protein that is prpsc form of the protein which is having a beta pleated sheet conformation and this particular abnormal prion protein is resistant to protease degradation even it is resistant to protease proteinase k and this basically tends to aggregate and therefore it is amylo amyloidogenic in nature okay giving rise to prions and it tends to accumulate in various tissues of the body especially in the central nervous system okay so among the transmissible form of the disease it most commonly occurs by iatrogenic means iatrogenic means for example if i am giving some medicine to the patient it might come for example growth hormones which are derived from cadavers of the patients which were infected with with prions disease that might also transmit it or if i am doing a corneal transplant or a dural transplant so in any of this uh, transplant or medical procedures the doctor by itself by mistake can transmit it so most commonly the transmissible form of disease is iatrogenic in nature coming to the basic classification of the prions disease we can classify them as those occurring in humans and those which are occurring in animal host so those occurring in humans are creutzfeldt jakob's disease which is also the most common variety of prions disease gerstmann strossler schenke syndrome fatal familial insomnia and kuru now among animals we can see scrapie in sheep and goat mink transmissible encephalopathy chronic wasting disease of the deer and elk bovine spongiform encephalopathy which is very commonly called as the mad cow's disease as well now coming to the important pathogenesis of the prions disease we have to understand that there are three important stages of the pathogenesis of prions disease there is an initiation stage followed by the stage of propagation and lastly we have the stage of aggregation so let us try to understand that how this particular prpsc or abnormal uh, prion protein is formed so as i told you the first most common way in which this prion protein or the abnormal prion protein is derived is from a normal prion protein this is a normal prion protein now if you remember 
if you remember as i already told you the prions disease can either be sporadic in nature or it can be familial or it can be iatrogenic in nature so keeping that thing in our mind we can understand one important thing over here that is basically if you see this prpc can either convert into this prpsc so the normal form can convert to this abnormal form very very slowly and this occurs in case of the sporadic variety of prions disease example the sporadic cases of crutfels jacobs disease okay so this pathway is quite a uh, slow on the other hand if the particular prions disease is inherited from the parents or from the grandparents so in the germ line mutation form so if it has some kind of a mutation if it has received some kind of mutation it can fasten this process it can speed up the process of conversion of the normal prion into this abnormal prion protein and it is classically seen in the inheritable or familial cases of prions disease example in the familial cases of crutfels jacobs disease jesman strossler schenke syndrome and fatal familial insomnia one very important thing is as i already told you there is a sporadic variety there is a familial variety and there is a variety which is iatrogenic via consumption of contaminated food or via medical instrumentation like the corneal transplant as well as the dural transplant or administration of certain medicines like the growth hormones which is derived from the infected cadavers okay so these are the three important ways in which the formation of prion proteins or abnormal prion proteins can occur now once this abnormal prion protein can occur it is propagatable that means it can show propagation what is propagation the propagation is basically a phenomenon wherein this particular abnormal this is your abnormal prion protein this abnormal can even convert this normal prion protein into abnormal form as we appreciate over here and this this process is called as propagation which is the next step and this uh, propagation accounts for the transmissible variants of prion so there are certain transmissible variants of prion which are your iatrogenic cgd variant cgd as well as kuru so these are the transmissible variant of prions where this process of propagation occurs now once this abnormal proteins are formed they are classically resistant they are classically resistant to proteus degradation so what is going to happen they are going to aggregate and they are going to form insoluble aggregates which is resistant to degradation and these aggregates are going to accumulate in the different kinds of the neural tissue they are going to accumulate in the neural tissue leading to neuronal toxicity in the form of spongy form change which is nothing but the presence of cytoplasmic vacuoles of various size and shape within the neuropil as well as within the cell body of the neurons so what the spongy form change is i am going to explain in details with the help of a nice diagram ultimately the end result is it is going to lead to neuronal cell death is it very clear now the prions disease if you see it is a neurodegenerative disorder which is caused by the spread of misfolded protein and remember one important mcq the normal prion protein it is nothing but it is a 30 kilo dalton cytoplasmic protein so with this we have completed the basics of the prions disease now we are going to go into the specifics and we will discuss the first very important or the most important uh, uh, prions disease that is the crutfels jacob disease as i have already mentioned this is the most common prion disease and the average age of presentation over here is quite late around 70 years of the age now as with other prions disease the cgd also have three important forms it can either be sporadic which accounts for 90% of all the cases or it can be familial in nature which is accounting for 8 to 10% of all the case and it occurs because of mutation in one gene that is called as prnp so as we have discussed these cases are going to progress very very fast whereas the sporadic cases as we have discussed before they are going to progress slowly and lastly we are having a very small number of iatrogenic cases which occurs because of a doctor performing corneal or dural transplant on the patient or he is doing deep implantation of electrodes into the brain or administration of contaminated human growth hormone this is your human growth human growth hormone or administration of infected human growth hormone 
all these three are the different varieties of CJD disease. Now clinically if you look at these patients they present with subtle changes in memory and behavior. So there is a behavioral change which is seen and this is rapidly followed by progressive dementia and it is also associated with pronounced involuntary jerky muscle contractions which is also called as a startle myoclonus. Now ataxia occurs when there is a cerebellar involvement and it is only seen in a minority of the patients. Remember this disease is uniformly fatal with the average survival of less than one year to be precise around seven months after the onset of symptoms. Now there are very important findings and characteristic findings that we get of prions disease. In the EEG or the electron encephalogram we can see a characteristic burst suppression pattern of periodic spike and wave complex. In the MRI we see increased signaling in the basal ganglia and the thalamus. Now if you carry out the CSF immunoassay okay it is going to demonstrate certain protein antigens which are labeled with 1433 okay so these are the characteristic uh, uh, you know diagnostic features of the CJD or and in general the prions disease coming to the next important variety of prions disease is your variant CJD it is a variant form of Krutfeld Jacobs disease now it differs from the classic variety because this affects younger adults and the behavioral changes it starts quite early the neurological syndrome it progresses more slowly as compared to the classic CJD and it is linked to the exposure to bovine spongiform encephalopathy through consumption of contaminated food or via transfusion of blood from asymptomatic patients of variant CJD. Now coming to the morphology of prions disease. You have to understand that uh, to see the histopathology we have to carry out a brain biopsy and the site is the non-dominant frontal lobe. So what are the pathognomonic feature that we see under the microscope is there is a classical spongiform transformation of the cerebral cortex okay and the deep grey matter the caudit and the putamen. So what happens that under the microscope you can see a lot of cytoplasmic vacuoles microscopic vacuoles of varying size and shapes within where within the neuropil very very important and within the cell body of the neurons or within the pericaryon of the neurons. So this is a very very important MCQ which is seen. So the classical feature or the pathognomonic feature of prions disease is the spongy form transformation of the cerebral cortex and the deep grey, grey matter. Remember the cortex, the cerebral cortex is far more commonly involved and this spongy form transformation is nothing but these are your microscopic vacuoles of varying sizes within the neuropil and within the pericaryon of the cell body and all these changes they come under the early changes early changes of prions disease one very important characteristic feature over here is that that at no stage in the disease in the prions disease is there any kind of inflammation so there is never any kind of inflammation associated with prions disease another important MCQ and in the advanced cases there will be severe neuronal loss reactive gliosis expansion of the vacuoles okay and these vacuoles might become cyst like and this condition is called as status spongiosis it is called as status spongiosis now let us look over here the diagnostic feature the diagnostic feature that we see over here is an extracellular deposition of aggregated abnormal PRPSC protein or abnormal prion proteins and this aggregation of abnormal prion proteins is called as Kuru plaques it is also called as the amyloid and typically they are spike ball type of amyloid if you go for a Congo red and pass staining then they will be positive they will show positivity with the Congo red and the past staining usually remember usually remember uh, they are present only in the cerebellum they are present in the cerebellum more and they are seen in very less number in 5% cases of classic Krutfeld Jacob disease they might also be present in the cerebrum but not in case of classic CGD but in fact they are present in the variant form of CGD in case it is present in the cerebrum Coming to the lab diagnosis, just looking at the histological picture, that is the spongiform change alone. Okay, if only spongiform change is there, then we will call it as a probable CJD. But definitive diagnosis requires either any one of the following criteria. 
either you should demonstrate the spike ball type of prp amyloid or the kuru plaque or you should do the immunohistochemistry in the biopsy material to demonstrate the presence of protease resistant abnormal prion protein or prpsc or you should or there should be detection of any prp gene mutation that is recognized as pathogenic and lastly there should be transmission of this spongy form encephalopathy to a animal host if any one criteria is met is met then we can definitely say that the diagnosis of of prions disease is made now one very important point that the biopsy material from the patients with suspected crutfels jacobs disease requires very cautious handling as even the formalin fixed paraffin embedded tissues or blocks can retain the power of transmissibility now remember one important mcq is that all the prions disease will show spongy form change except fatal familial insomnia they do not show to show you the diagram this is the classical biopsy taken from the cerebral cortex and this is showing the classical variable microscopic vacuoles variable sized microscopic vacuoles some of them are present in the neuropil and some of them are basically present within the cell body of the neurons or the perikaryon and this is called as the spongiotic chain the vacuolization is called as the spongiotic chain you can see some of the cell bodies are involved you can see sometimes only the vacuolar change is present in the neuropil so this is the classical pathognomonic feature of a prions disease it is classically seen in all the prion disease except the fatal familial insomnia now this is the second important image that wherein i wanted to demonstrate the pass positive amyloid or kuru plaque that is present so this is the pass staining wherein you can see the classical pinkish staining of the kuru or the amyloid plaque so this is classically seen mainly in case of cerebellar cortex it is not seen in the cerebrum and this can be seen in the cerebrum but in variant variety of crutfels jacob disease i hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this particular lecture and if you do think that i have added to your knowledge please don't forget to like subscribe and share because by doing so you are going to help me to build my channel thank you everyone